All right, uh, greetings family. Uh, Bumani Tamba here, uh, connecting with Brianna, and uh, we're here to talk about American slave plantation and why people like myself uh, do these op op uh, do this uh, connection to the African continent, uh, do this link with the countries like Ghana for repatriation. Uh, so, got lots of things to share about that. Um, as you mentioned, you saw a video that say uh, American yeah. slave plantation on my YouTube page. Yes, I saw that question and I saw you speaking to three other people about this question and I was so struck by it that I wanted to also ask you and talk about how that kind of relates to your own work of how trying to get people out of this country. Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, and you know, you and I was talking earlier and you know, just trying to tell people when I break down this thing about America being a modern day slave plantation, it's not personal. It's dealing with the fact of reality. You're dealing with a situation where, you know, you explain to people, you know, because a lot of times, you know, they get excited. I'm also then people know that I get it. You know, I mean, America is that country. It's one of the most organized countries as far as just uh, a country that gives you a sense of so-called freedom, a sense of, uh, you know, anything that you need, you have access to, you know. It's, uh, Telling you, you know, earlier about the concept of this Garvey town being self-sufficient, self-reliant, and building everything from the ground up, versus just having access to everything that you need here. Your, your, your water electrical system, you just turn it on and go rent your house or apartment or buy you one. Uh, you know, and all those systems are sort of organized. Not saying that you can't, that Africa doesn't have any organized systems or Ghana doesn't have an organized system because it's there. You know, you can you, you can go buy your house in a subdivision. You can do all those things and you know it's it's set there but the one and most important option to give you is option to acquire land and build your community from the ground up uh, and then that way you know we'll learn all the things we need to learn and we can teach our children how to be nation builders versus having them stuck in like this fake education system where you know you know we, we hear children talk about all the time that you know, they don't learn nothing in school and sometimes we think it's a joke but you know it's like when people talk about learning you know if you're going to be teaching me something teach me how to be self-sufficient how to you know how to provide for myself how to you know how to work, build a community with the people that i'm with and how to put ourselves in a future to where you know we can depend on ourselves but you know, understand you know the way the system works i understand that it's what it is it's designed to connect you know um, us to uh prison slash plantation pipeline system to either put us in to where we're working in the corporate world or you know we lose our freedom completely and in the prison systems are uh, working uh, you know so, but all of it uh, goes back into the same systems it empowers these corporations and empowers these wicked evil white devils that own you know, a majority of this country and you know, you know based on whether it's connected to the transatlantic European slave trade or some other way of you know how they attain their their, their wealth but it's always based on oppressing our people uh, our African people so you know we had a situation where you know I was telling you that uh, you know when I look at Marcus Garvin W.E. Du Bois that's a good starting point for me for how mm -hmm. you know people like myself look at the situation you know someone like Du Bois at that time and people like himself who saw America in a changing path to where opportunities are opened up. You can go to get a PhD at the white man's university and, you know, and, you know, and have a sense of pride and all this other fake way of looking at it. But, you know, some people literally fell for it. So generations went by and decades went by to where, you know, we see ourselves give up certain self-reliance and put ourselves in a dependent system to where now we send our children to school to where we tell them to go get this certain education or depend on someone else to provide their, you know, them employment and to go fight their way in these corporations and telling some of us to straighten their hair all the way, bleach their skin, act bougie and white as possible, all other stuff you have to do to, you know, and which it makes no sense to me. So, you know, you have to get to a point where you break off from that. And for those who are open to it, it's, it's perfect. So, I appreciate Marcus Garvey Lena Foundation of just stepping outside the box and talk about us connecting to Africa. Because now we're in a situation now where more and more of us can invest in a self-sufficient future 
invest in a future where you don't have to literally be here just working as you know working a certain position where all of your money just go back into the system and where you turn around and you you know you, you don't own anything in that community now, you know, that got to be torture but understand that's the way we're taught and you know you, you know the system smoothed over to where they, they you know I, I was listening to a recording on one of my uh, you know on, on the radio and it's talking about my position if, which is aircraft maintenance technician. I went to the school and they'll tell you all the money you can make. And I was like, wow. I was like, <laughs> and I was laughing because I was like, you know, they give you a rain. They said you can make up to $100,000 a year. <laughs> and, you know, and you can, and some of us probably can make that. And most of us would be on the bottom end of that, which is not bad, but it's like, it sells you a dream of, you know, after all, you just go get education and you make this money. And, the, the, the system is the need you and they need more people to come fix planes. They need more people to do this. And it's just something continuously that you've been sold and smoothed over with. So when people hear myself talk about the stuff that I talk about, they just tend to think that I'm nuts. But I'm telling them that, hey, it's like you can't work for these people forever anyway. You know, what do you do? You, you know, the longest I've seen someone a job is when I was working at the airlines is they had people up who that's been working the, the, the airlines for 40, 50 years. And they literally came out of high school and then literally got in that comfort zone. It's kind of like people who went into the military like myself, but instead of getting out, they, they never thought about doing anything else because they're like, all right, I'm going to keep this job and I don't want to have to think outside the box. But that's not the reality of the world that we live in. You know, we, you know we're going to have to make a, a change. And, you know, and that's all saying that I enjoy the fact that you, know, you have someone like President Trump in office bringing and bringing the pain <laughs> because you know you, you, you some, sometimes people have to be shaken up you know uh, after obama smoothed people over with butter love you know you know someone come and shake them up out of the dream and now mm. we're in a situation where you you know we need pe people have to think about is this education system going to be enough for their children are we really wasting all these years because once you move to somewhere like ghana and you build your own community you're in charge of your destiny you know you know, we had a situation where you, you learn in six years of basic education, from six to 12, and from, from 12 to 18, you're learning how to be a professional, whether it's a, a professional technical specialist or architect or whatever your field is based on what you're looking to do or engineer, and you're learning from the best of us. Uh, mm -hmm. I know sometimes people may look at that, that sounds like, that sounds good and everything, but realistically, when you gotta get up every day and no work 30, 40 years, for certain people and you have to throw your children whether it's the daycare, the child care, leave the children with this person or do all those things you have to do and make sure you get on time. It's the same energy. If you put that energy or even 1% of that energy into doing something for yourself and investing in your own, you can have all the things you need to have at a, you know, and instead of depending on the retirement, within 10, 20 years, you have what you need. All the food that you're gonna need, your business, um, you know, your, your, your network, your connection, um, every um, single way to take it yourself. So, and so I want to ask, um, so for those who are here in America that would consider themselves activists who are trying to, you know, eradicate these racist systems and, and white supremacy here, what do you say to people who will tell you maybe, I don't think it's right for me to leave, it's better for me to stay in this country and try to fix it? Do you think it's fixable? And what do you say to them? No, I don't think it's uh, fixable, but I, I really feel like the system has to be what it is and they need people like that. So I personally don't want everyone to leave. I won't leave because then it'll be, you know, you need the decor of people staying. If you just have everybody start running, <laughs> they're gonna spark an alarm. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. So I'm thankful to all the people who love America and would die for America and feel that way because they bridge the gap between there being an issue and a problem and it just being a complete exodus movement. Uh, and then at the same time too, we don't need everyone. We really need, honestly, the people who are true and passion and will die for Africa and will die for the future of their children and die for what they believe in and not just feel like they're coming over to Africa where they want all these things to be in place and everything to be established so they can just live a nice bougie life in Africa. Because we do have people like that in Ghana and they get there and you don't see them, they don't want to participate, not. they just want to enjoy their life and they have Ghanaians working for them like slaves. And that's not what people like myself are looking to do. I think that's a shame 
but nevertheless, you know, people are entitled to the way what they want to do. So I'm really looking for people who really see it. And that's why we try to share as much documentation as possible. And even when we do the simple, basic comparison to, to people and say, think about what your life will be 30, 40 years in America if you continue on the same path. And think about it if you just start building something fresh and investing it little by little while you're working your job here and while you're doing certain things here. And that's what Garvey Town is here. While some of us are working here, more and more for us to go over little by little and build, and then we just keep it going. But sometimes people look at it, oh my God, I gotta start back over and everybody I know is here and all my family and everything. You know, one of the things we gotta do is learn to let go. And I've learned to let go since I was like 18 years old and I've been letting go ever since. You know, whether it's girlfriend, wife, job, best friend, you know, you know, you know, <laughs> anything, you know, it's, it's, it's the, hard, you know, the hardest thing, you know, is like, you know, it's even the hardest thing is like loving someone and realizing that you need to let them go so they can be free. So they'll be out of your, out of, you know, and sometimes this has to be like that. And sometimes you have to leave to, to, to follow your destiny. Like I realized that to leave New York city when I was 18, in order to be in a different environment that I can open up my mind, open up the way I see the world and open up opportunities for myself. Sometimes if you're in a certain environment, it clogs, you know, it clogs your adventurous spirit. And, you know, for me personally, that works for me. Um, I'm not saying it will work for everyone. Some people, they may not necessarily need to, to, to step out, you know, um, but, um, you know, but, you know, I believe it's the ultimate way to build leadership take responsibility on, take on challenges, and put yourself in a position where you have the, the skills and experience to work with other people to say, hey, I'm gonna define something different for, uh, you know, for our children, our people, our brothers and sisters, or our family. And, you know, and this is what that project is, Garvey Town, and the investments that we're dealing with in, in Ghana, and then even expanding on the travel and tourism business, which, like, you know, travel and tourism in, in, inside the African continent is going to be incredible. So even when we get in there and setting up our base and acquiring our bus and staff, you know, we'll be able to just do business there. A little more independent and free, free than we've ever been, you know, because right now, even here, you feel oppressed at a point where you're working 24-7 and you're giving back too much to the system and not enough, you know, but so even when you're self-reliant or self-employed and you're here, you're stuck in that way. So the issue is you being here uh, because yeah. your presence, you know, you just occupying this office or house space or the car or whatever, the taxes, uh, the, you know, the insurance, all of that, you know, you are investing back in the corporation. So I just feel like it's ideal for us to use our labor, invest in our own companies that we have in the continent. And little by little, that will solve our problems. And Encourage those of us who love working on the plantation and love the master to keep doing their job. Mm, wow. And keep the peace. <laughs> one more, I've never heard. That's very, very interesting. Um, one more question for you. So as far as making that transition, do you find, what do you think culturally is the biggest thing that people might have to overcome coming from a place like America and moving to Ghana, and and how is that? How are they able to do that culturally? Is it a big shift and shock? Uh, yeah, it's definitely gonna be a culture shift because then you know, you're in, a, you're in a country where people are speaking Tree, Ga, Awe, um, you know, so you hear different dialects, and you're you know, the system of how the streets, the road, bridges, building, how the, the country is laid out is probably different from you know where you are, uh, mm -hmm. so. You know, it's, it's a sense of, you know, once you start traveling internationally and moving around, you get to appreciate a different country from how it is. But the unique thing that's what you're going to do, you're going to a country where you're building a community for what you need. That way you can have what you need and you're not lacking anything. Like we require good, fast, high-tech internet. So we'll build uh, internet, cell phone tower from the ground up. So all those things, you know, Scientifically, we can do a lot of things, and I learned a lot of these things from just being a technician throughout my life and going to uh, even troubleshooting school uh, at the airlines, where you just troubleshooting systems. But all of these is just you creating systems that's working for what you needed to work for, like your water system. You can collect water for a whole community and build a nice pump filter slash sewage system. 
And I know it's nice and simple saying it, but yeah, it definitely work and financial investment. So when you put your money together as a people, as a community, if you know you can you know put pennies together and you could build anything you need in that community. So that's the mindset you're sharing with people and the vision you let people know to to kind of just look at. But I understand that it's not the simplest thing to understand, especially since we, we've been brainwashed with what we've been brainwashed, just wake up in the morning and everything is there for you in society. Yeah. Well, Lonnie, thank you so much for taking the time to talk all of this through with me. I really learned a lot. Absolutely, yeah, definitely, my sister. So family, uh, once again, uh, if you want to connect with us, uh, visit our website, uh, Africa for the Africans.org, and uh, you'll see an array of information from Garvey Town to tours, to a link to YouTube, Facebook, and so on. So family, uh, you take care, and we'll see you in May or December in Ghana. <laughs>